guys it's sam welcome or welcome back to my channel so i have a bit of a chore video to share with y'all i've been doing so many different things with my plants it's been a lot and there's a lot of stuff that i haven't filmed so i decided to pull out my camera and film some of the things that i am doing since i've already skipped out on so much and then i figured i could show y'all some updates on a few other things that i've been doing let's acknowledge and address this this is self tanner i never have an issue with it like creasing here this time i did so also this is like the one stubborn nail that i just cannot get off your girl's a mess let's do some planty stuff this is gonna be like days of plant stuff but i do have some things i want to show you and like do right now and then we'll jump on into the week and some of the other chores that we're gonna be doing also, I'm sick, so my voice is kind of icky, I feel like. My lemon water, this is actually lime water because I'm out of lemons. So I do have some stuff to show you, but I want to do this really quickly. I got some sulfur, plant sulfur, because I was told that's the only thing that will kill flat mites. I don't have a microscope, but I'm very suspicious that I've had flat mites, especially on a few of my Hoya. It's very hard to get off. Nobody warned me about that. The sulfur is very hard to get off. Like I've washed so many of these leaves over and over and it looks like it's off. And then when the leaves dry, they still have like white spots on them. But this is my Skindapsis Jade Satin. Look at her. She's grown so much. She's so pretty. So I put this little loop circular trellis in her a good while ago. Um, and I've just kind of been attaching her with my Velcro tape, plant tape as she grows along and we have another node to try and attach if i can manage not to break her so i would like to go ahead and do that right now really quick while i have her out if you let them grow too long one way then the chances of snapping them, trying to like bend them down, especially when they have like thick stems, uh, increases. So let's see. I'm gonna kind of loosely do it because already it's not wanting to bend. Very loose. I do have some moss and pole, like the out exterior exteriors of the poles do-it-yourself poles and some moss on the way so I'm gonna be making some like two foot tall moss poles so I'm really wanting to get a lot of my plants climbing and bigger leaves this is my goal this spring and summer isn't she lovely though that looks so nice and I'm just gonna I don't know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna keep attaching as she grows this is her newest leaf here there's another one coming in right there so my plan is to keep attaching, but once it gets to here, then what do I do? It'll look really lovely, but <laughs> I don't know. We'll just cross that bridge when we get there, I suppose. My ficus chivaliana. You guys, this is the first new leaf I'm getting on this since I purchased it. I got this, it's been a few months ago now, a couple months ago maybe. It took it quite a while to acclimate. We did lose some of the lower leaves. I'm actually seeing hella spider webs. Oh my gosh. But that's not like spider mite webs. That's regular spider. <sighs> Okay, we have a little spider friend somewhere. 
I'm just noticing that there's, I don't know if y'all are going to be able to see, but yeah, there's webs all down here. It's fine. So there's this little tiny plantlet right here that's been there. It may have given me a new leaf on that. I'm not sure. But the mother plant, like the main plant, it had a little tiny growth point for the longest bit. But it just never pushed out a leaf. It's just, I really think because it's a ficus, it just took its sweet time acclimating is all. And look, I just pulled the sheath off of it because it was kind of sticking off the tip of the leaf. There's our first new leaf and there is a growth point there as well. Look how cute. I really just adore the ficus. So I was getting nervous. The fact that like weeks were going by and it wasn't pushing out any growth. But that's a really good sign. That leaf looks really healthy and beautiful. So I'm like on the lookout for that spider now, which I don't mind. Spiders are our friends when it comes to plants, but I just don't want them to like crawl on me and scare me. I actually might be purchasing a little furry jumping spider, you guys, um, to get over my fear of spiders. I am going to be purchasing one. I'm just still learning about them. Like I have his little enclosure and stuff. We're going to film that whole experience, the unboxing, everything. So stay with me. But his little enclosure is just like this big. So cute. Anywho, I do see a lot of mold uh, on the top of the soil here. But that's not really an issue. Anyways, yeah, I'm really excited about that new leaf. Finally, I was really concerned for a minute. Not going to lie. Okay, this is my Philodendron Dark Lord, um, who we had to start over a couple seasons ago. This is the new leaf that she has given me, or he, since he's a lord. Um, it's really pretty. It's decent size, considering this guy's not on a pole. This is one I'm probably going to be putting on a pole whenever I get the stuff to make it. Um, he probably has spider mites. I definitely see a lot of cat hair. He's got webs, too. But they're not like spider mite webs. It's so weird. Where is the spider that's just like webbing up all of my plants? Oh my goodness. I need to do some dusting or something. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I was going to say this plant's been drying out really fast. It's still in moss. It's in one of my favorite little planters that I got from this really cute little plant shop. I can't remember what it was called now. But it's cute. I don't really want to put anything in soil in this because I don't want to ruin the paint job and the design. So I have it in moss because moss, you know, it's it dries out quickly. So the pot wouldn't be staying wet forever. It's just painted terracotta. But I was thinking, as much as I do like this plant in this pot, I think it might be time because it is just drying out so fast to switch it to something a little bit larger and less quick, fast wicking, because like I said, it's terracotta. So let's just pull it out and look and see what we're working with in terms of roots. Because I had to completely reroute this one, mind you. Okay, yeah, it's pretty full of roots. <laughs> we have roots all the way down to the bottom. Can't really see that much but yeah it's well rooted rooted it's well rooted i think i am gonna move it to this white planter so i have some moss somewhere let's move my camera down i don't have a lot of moss because like i said i'm waiting for the new moss that i ordered to come but this is moss that i've actually repurposed still healthy and stuff let me bring the camera down okay so I'm going to take this one and give it a nice little, oh gosh, shower, maybe soak the leaves a bit after I repot it because ugh, those leaves are super dusty. There's like dust, a mixture of dust, cat hair, and spider webs. Like I said, I don't think it's spider mites. It's just like regular spider webs. <laughs> Same on that ficus. I don't even need to add that much. But I do want to add some fresh moss because, yeah, it just dries out so, so quickly. This is a ceramic planter. It's a tad bigger. So hopefully it's not drying out quite as quickly 
and he'll be a little bit happier in here. That was easy enough, wasn't it? It really was. Maybe a wee bit more here. Okay. There he is. It's a nice, simple, classic white. It actually looks really nice with the other darker color themes going on with this plant. My mic keeps dying. Shoot. My mic keeps dying. I'm going to switch to my AirPods, guys. Give me a sec. Okay, guys, I don't love this. Because my AirPods still don't have, like, the noise-canceling feature, I don't even know if the mic's working with them. But do you guys remember last year, it's been close to a year now, I purchased a little baby philodendron tortum. I will put some footage on the screen if I can find it. Of whenever I first got this and like kind of the, its progression, it was actually a little black plastic condiment cup. It was like this big, and then it was inside a little tiny plastic bubble dome with a lid, and then it was in this. And it had like no roots, and the leaves were all just like none of them had any shape to them. The tortum was so pricey, so you know I got a baby plant. It's been honestly such a pleasure over this last year just watching this plant come to be so i finally took it out of that condiment container and i put it in this adorable little ceramic planter it's still in moss but the root system is quite substantial compared to what it looked like initially starting out and i just think it looks so lovely so i'm trying to transition it out of the ziploc bag so what i've been doing is just keeping it in here and unzipping it a bit more every couple of days until because i don't want to shock it i mean i know these are pretty easy going plants it's a philodendron but i don't want to shock it by just going taking it out of its super humid enclosure throwing it out into my house but look each leaf that comes in has been more and more like cut out fenestrated and this new leaf here is just perfect it looks like a and this one looks like a full-on tortum now and I'm just so very excited. But how cute does he look in this? And again, I wish I would have filmed just that process of moving him over because why not? But I didn't. But here's a little update anyway. I am 100% obsessed. It's just such a fast grower. And it has some red on it. I don't know if it's going to come across on camera. Mostly on the backs of the stems. But it has red, reddish pink on it because it's getting such bright light so I think that definitely plays a part in how well it's doing how fast it's growing I love him hey it's a new day hey guys I'm sick so please look over my voice my tonsils are super swollen oh it's pretty gross I've been doing some plant chores today and decided I might as well film this one I'm trying to put together a little bit of a chore video a spring chore video this is my Scandapsis Pictus Exotica. This is from Sarah and I's like first ever plant swap. It's been three years ago now. It was 20, spring of 2020. Uh, this plant looked really beautiful at one point and had some really massive leaves and was just quite stunning to be honest. But where it's been living, it's been living under purple grow lights up there and it dries out really quickly and you can just see she's not in the best health. She's not living her best life. So I want to actually go ahead and repot this plant and I would like to put it in this plastic pot and then down in this blue pot perhaps. I also have this pot if the root system is like by chance really tiny and this was cuttings that she had sent me and like I said it used to be a lot more full and large but it used to be really beautiful I mean it still is but it just needs some she needs some help this is what I'm hoping to do this is a wooden plank with a makeshift extension that my husband kind of put together for me for my monstera dubia well, I recently had to chop that up and throw it in a terrarium and so I disinfected this and I would like to put my exotica up this plank. 
just kind of experiment a little bit. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're back to the old cereal container with soil. I just mixed up this fresh batch. Let's get this guy out and see what the roots are looking like. Some water here for my throat. Okay, I just had it earlier today, so I'm not sure what happened to it, but I can't find my roll of Velcro tape. But I have a few pieces here that I hope I can use in the meantime to attach her until I find it. I have two different rolls. One of The one that I was using earlier is almost empty of the Velcro tape, but somehow both of them are misplaced currently. Okay. Oh no, this is concerning. This used to have a really great root system. Maybe that's part of the issues. Well, no, these roots here look good. Nice and white on this little tiny one. This one does have some healthy roots, um, but it also does have some dried out, like dead roots as well. Right here. Hmm. Let me see. This has some nice healthy roots with some bark attached. Okay. It's definitely been so pretty severely underwatered. I think that's our issue here and why there's not better roots. These are good healthy roots on this one. I didn't realize how many different little cuttings there was. Okay, so we do have a few dead roots on a couple of these cuttings, but for the most part, we also have some new healthy growth, so that's a good sign. I'll take it. Remove those dead ones, the dead bits. Okay, and let's see which pot. Let me have this one as well. I do want to encourage these vines to root further, to root more. Uh, so I think a nice, fresh, healthy soil mix and a less well-draining, water-wicking pot could be good. And me staying on top of my watering as well as moving it to a different location, I think that could work out well to get some new root growth. Um, I think this is actually the perfect size up. I mean, that's not terrible either, but I think we're okay in the smaller one, honestly. Oh, I really miss that container. It's so much easier. I want to cover some of those nodes. Uh, so I'm putting the plant pretty far down in. So I want to encourage, like I said, nice new root growth. Probably actually going to have to cut this back as well because, I mean, look at that. Go ahead and do that. I'll put this in some water. Um, it looks like I'm doing this one too. Basically starting her over on a plank. I should have put this down in before I started adding the soil. That was a poor decision on my part would have been easier, but since there's not like a super significant root system, uh, I think it'll be okay. I think it's fine. I'm going to add just a little bit more soil back here for stability.
this new leaf right here. Hopefully this takes nicely and she'll be a lot happier. And I'm going to stick these on water. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Hi guys, happy Monday. If you hear background noise, I apologize. So my little watering board here. I have my Homolomena selby. Uh, it's a very beautiful plant. It has more of a thick leaf. The coloration on it is very pretty, but if we turn it around, you will notice we have several crispy yellow leaves, and I also did find a couple of spider mites crawling around on a couple of the leaves, as well as the potting medium is pretty disgusting. We've got this gross moss going on here. These plants don't like to dry out, uh, and of course, when they're drying out too frequently, that does then make them susceptible to pests. So we're going to clean her up a bit, treat her, and I'm going to go ahead and throw her in a new pot with some fresh soil and give her a good drink and feeding. And she does have a new leaf coming in, if you can see right here. Let's start off by removing this moss. Go ahead and remove her from this pot. Take a look at the roots. The roots look nice and healthy, so that's a good sign. A little mix actually isn't terrible for this plant, but we're gonna repot her anyway. Okay, so we're gonna move her up to this planter right here, a nice little ceramic pot. It's the perfect size to up her, and I think she'll be much happier and drying out a lot less frequently. The rest of that moss stuff off there. We're all sick in my house, by the way. If you hear coughing and such, that's why. Okay, I'm mixing up some warm, soapy water, and I'm just going to do a bit of a leaf soak. Dip the leaves down in the soapy water because this is more of a sensitive plant. I don't know how she might react to chemicals, alcohol. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Really quickly, let me show you guys the skindapsis. So here's what she looks like today. I want to show you what I'm doing with the cuttings that we took. Okay. So I picked up this really cute little cactus planter at Home Depot a while back. It has a drainage hole, but it also has a plug. So I've left the plug in. And then I got this little glass colander type thing at a thrift store and I've never gotten to use it. So we're just trying something different. So I put, filled this up with water, the reservoir, if you will, and 
since this little container has holes all over it, stick that down in. And then we have the cuttings inside. I think that just looks really cute. We have the little flowers going around the rim. Isn't that adorable? And yeah, just basic, simple water propagation, but it looks nice. So I didn't really have anything small enough. So I think that works quite well. It's cute. I got my mess. Back up here where we can see. Liquid dirt mixed up here. And I'm gonna add just a wee bit to this bottle of purified water. Like that. And this is what I'm gonna use to water my home alumina. Now I do have a ton of perlite in here, but this mix is not as well draining as my standard mix. That's okay for this plant. Homolominas are very thirsty, thirsty babes. Can't wait to see that new leaf and hopefully she's a lot happier now. I am gonna treat her with some neem oil. We have another new leaf coming in right here also. So I just thought I would show you guys a little bit of the things that I've been doing. As plants grow, we kind of have to rearrange things a little bit, right? Uh, so I had a lot of plants that I have had to move to this larger shelf for that reason and that's what I've done because I had a bunch of smaller plants that don't really need all of this height basically that were on this top shelf and then my larger plants were just kind of sitting all around. This is a chore that I did that I didn't film but I put my Fingonium Chia Pence on this core pole because I would really like to encourage the leaves to get really really big i know the potential this plant has it started over a few times but i've had it really big before but i had it on a trellis previously not a pole so i really want to see i really want to see what she's going to do on a pole so i'm kind of waiting for a couple more leaves to come out so i can actually attach the plant probably the next leaf that comes up i'll be able to attach this petiole and we'll kind of go from there i know she's kind of hard to see but such an underrated plant honestly and we have my philodendron fibrosum right here. Getting ready to push out a new leaf out of that sheath. She does have some mite damage, but she's doing pretty well. And then I moved my Magnificum here after its treatment. It's already looking a lot better, but that uh, inflow is dying off. So we'll need to remove that. And there's a new leaf. There's a new leaf right there. And I, forgive me, I can never remember the name. It's a number philodendron. Philodendron 68968 or something like that. I'll put it on the screen. Uh, so I have this guy right here. This was his newest leaf here. And then we have my elbow right here, which is also actually pushing out a new leaf right there. That's exciting. That last newest leaf came in and hardened off beautifully. Just stunning. I kept my little begonia polygonoides here. Uh, if you can see, she's just like constantly flowering for me. She has the cutest little white flowers with yellow centers. Just precious, honestly. I kept my Dyskidia ovata here. Uh, we recently up-potted her in a live, and I think she's happy. She's pushing out lots of new growth. I think, look at that pretty purple new growth. Love to see it. And here's my, I believe this is my Mexicanum, right? Yeah, this is my uh, Philodendron Mexicanum, kind of crammed in there. And this is my philodendron. Oh, this is philodendron fibrosum, I think. 
and this one is fillet and drink serpents i may have called this one fibrosum but this one is serpents this is fibrosum which is also doing pretty well that's her newest leaf gorgeous uh is it fichi or no it's fungi right here that i put on this tree leaf trellis looking good recovering from scale bug and i had to cut her back a little bit but she's looking beautiful and i moved some of my other hoyas over here as well so we have this little variegated Wyetii, we have my variegated heart leaf, we have my Oncidium orchid back there with her lovely bloom bud coming in. Uh, we have Hoya Snowball. Oh, this Hoya, which, what are you? I can't even remember at the moment, but it's doing fantastic and I am obsessed. And this Hoya as well that uh, my girlfriend sent me off of hers. It was just these two back leaves, and it had another one, but it lost it. So, one, two, three, four, five. All five of these, all five of these leaves are new. You can see that brand new one there. It's nice and red, sun stressed, and there's there. And then it's also shot off a growth point over here with a new leaf. Oh, there's another new leaf hiding. This is a no ID Hoya. Not sure what she is. And then hiding here is my philodendron maximum um, with his newest leaf there. It's starting to harden and push out another one. This shelf, I'm still like rearranging stuff, so don't judge. And then my beautiful, lovely Thai constellation is working on her new leaf there. I moved this peperomia. What are you? I kept the name tag because I can't ever remember what she is cupid is it the cupid i think it's a variegated cupid peperomia she is lovely as well i think she'll be pretty happy there and then we have my big boy my vici up here in this little wicker basket oh you guys this is exciting well we have a new leaf coming in on wait <laughs> wait a minute on my capria red secret but look at this let me show you I am obsessed. Okay, I have to show you guys. So this was my last newest leaf on my Florida Beauty. And it, I mean, the variegation was just gorgeous. That was really fun to watch come in. And I've been pretty busy over the last week, so I haven't really got to watch this one, like the, varig the variegation come in as much. Because when the leaves first unfurl, they're very much... They very much just look green with maybe a little bit of like yellow discoloration, but you really don't get to see what the variegation pattern is going to look like on each new leaf until it starts to harden off a bit. And um, so, yeah, I checked in on this one after we got home from Easter activities and it's just like, wow, it's so different from the last one, but also like it's just so pretty. And then once it fully hardens, you'll re we'll really get to uh the, the variegation will really pop then so i'm loving this plant this was a dream plant for basically all of my plant collecting years and to have it and be able to watch it grow so beautifully uh there's really no words indescribable feeling okay and then here's my little philodendron campii that i had to restart there's her newest leaf love the ripple the rippling leaf it's really, really neat. I just think it's such a cool looking plant. So many plant tours I've been doing that I haven't filmed. So I'm just kind of catching you guys up a bit, I guess. Hi. All right, y'all. I hope the TV is not distracting. I'm sorry. That's going to do it for this chore vlog. It's like a week worth of plant chores, I would say. Be sure and give it a like if you liked it. Make sure you're subscribed if you want to. I have a lot more content planned and coming, so bear with me. It's spring. I have so many plant chores and so much stuff to be done. So definitely probably going to be filming a good bit of it, but thanks for watching.